A while back, I made some mistakes with an Irish coffee. And Mr. Black thought it was about time I got around to setting the record straight and fixing myself. So this is that. Plus two new drinks you can make with Mr. Black that I'm I'm in love with. <laughs> These are fantastic drinks. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Black, for sponsoring this episode and making this kind of thing possible. I don't think it's any secret any, around here that I, I'm a big fan of Mr. Black. I just think it's fantastic stuff. Um, drink it, uh, buy it, use it. It's good. It's good stuff, especially if you are looking for a coffee liqueur that's not sweetened. I'm teamed up with Mr. Black to talk about cold brew Irish coffee and also a scotch variant that I'm kind of in love with. But before we get into that, the Irish coffee I made a ways back is, is wrong. I did it wrong. You all gave me shit about it, and I deserved it. So let's fix that before we get into these other drinks. A little history. Joseph Sheridan is the fellow who gets the credit for inventing Irish coffee back in 1942. Um, and I say gets the credit. Joseph Sheridan invented Irish coffee in 1942. He invented it while he was the head chef at the restaurant at the airport in Ireland. I forget what the original airfield was called. It moved and became called Shannon's Airport in Ireland. It takes off here in the United States a few years later. Stanton Delaplane is this famous travel writer. He's at Shannon's Airport in Ireland in 1951. Uh, has Irish coffee, which by then is like the official greeting welcome drink of the airport. I think airports were a lot different in the 50s. Here's your Irish coffee, sir. Thank you for surviving. Delaplane returns stateside. He's in San Francisco at the Buena Vista, trying to recreate that drink with the owner, Jack Coupler. Um, and they failed. They just couldn't quite figure it out. So a year later, uh, Jack, in 1952, offers Joseph Sheridan a job. And Sheridan thought, living in America sounds like it might be cool. So he took it and emigrated. And he brought the drink with him. And the drink has been a staple at the Buena Vista um, and forever associated with that bar ever since. The Buena Vista Irish coffee is the gold standard in Irish coffees. It is the one against which all other Irish coffees are judged. Uh, let's make it. Let's make Joe Sheridan's slash the Buena Vista's, however you want to refer to it. I think Joe Sheridan's makes some more sense. Uh, Irish coffee. The first thing we got to do is warm up our glass. The little, I don't have one on hand, but that like hot drink with the handle on the side. Believe it or not, that was actually originally designed for beer. I think, unless my reading is wrong on that, uh, and somehow it became the hot drink thing, probably because of the handle. Um, but the Irish coffee, as uh, Joe Sheridan, uh, always went in a goblet like this. And I ordered a bunch of goblets. They will be here maybe tomorrow, probably next week, because um, I didn't think I had any. So lo and behold, I have this one. So this is very fancy. Uh, it's the only one I have. Let's not break it. But um, it is the appropriate glass, so I lucked out. I'm going to heat it up right now with just a little bit of hot. Ah, it's pouring it right onto my hand like a moron. This is very hot water, as you can tell. Let's pour some hot water in there like a sane person. You might notice as well that I'm wearing a different apron today. This is from Search and Rescue Denim, and they sent me one and let me customize it and everything like that. It's beautiful. I love this apron. It, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but it has like this really cool flannel lining and everything. I am reluctant to change anything about the way the show looks. I just overthink everything like crazy. So I figured, what the heck, let's wear it once. Somebody suggested that I should just do it. And you're right, I should. So here it is. We'll test it out. We'll see if we like it or not. So I'll leave the hot water there a moment. It's been a moment. Water comes out carefully so I don't burn myself. Now, two sugar cubes. Joe Sheridan and the Buena Vista, they use sugar cubes. They actually use, I think they're CA brand. I don't have those. I don't also have Domino Dots, which would be more appropriate probably, but I do have these Demerara sugar cubes, which is actually going to be interesting because at the Dead Rabbit, they do use a Demerara syrup. And I think that if I go with the smaller ones, we should be fine. It should be about the same. Same amount of sugar, same amount of sugar. I don't know if you know this or not, but I don't actually live here. My coffee maker's in a different room. It's a pain in the butt to bring it down for all these little coffee episodes. I think I'm gonna start doing it with a thermos. I don't know, you probably, you might object, maybe not. We'll find out, but it's, Fresh coffee, I just made it, it's real hot. Don't worry about that. And it just makes my life easier. Okay, so six ounces of this, here we go. Oh yeah, pours like a, pours a treat. And six, perfect. Uh, and so one and a third ounces of Tullamore Dew. One, most of one. And a third. It's an unusual measurement, a third. You don't get a third in a lot, but give that a stir to get the sugar nice and dissolved, which being a Demerara might take a little extra than with the white, but that's okay. 
Not much, I did it. Into the shaker, I will pour some heavy cream. You know, I could actually eyeball this because we're gonna use the appropriate amount. That's all that there is to it, right? And just dry shake that. Now I've done this where I've gone too far. It's easy to go too far on this one because what happens is you'll turn this into butter in a hurry. I have found, I don't know. It doesn't take much. If you go too far, it dries out. Okay. Oh yeah, nice, perfect. Do you need a spoon? It doesn't hurt to use a spoon, the back of a spoon to get this to float, but it's certainly not necessary either because really the fat content here should be so high in this heavy cream that this just floats. And then just fill it up. I'm very excited about this. Irish coffee, sir. I don't mind if I do, thank you. Irish coffee, here we go. See how this came out. Mm. Boy, is that good. It is wonderful. Mm. It is delightful. It is just so um, perfectly balanced. It doesn't taste sweet. In fact, it probably could be sweeter. And I think most of the Irish coffees I've had have been sweeter, but it doesn't taste sweet. It doesn't taste like a sweet dessert coffee thing. It just tastes like good coffee. Good coffee, <laughs> which, you know, it is good coffee. I made good coffee. Uh, I won't lie, the Tullamore probably selected because it kind of disappears in there. It doesn't really, it might round it out with a little bit of nuttiness, but coffee's a powerful flavor. Tullamore is one of the more subtle uh, whiskeys in my opinion. And then the cream, the texture of it, the kind of cold, hot mingling in your mouth. Um, and cream is very sweet, not like the same way that something simply adding sugar to something is, but cream, like people forget that dairy brings a lot of sugar to a dish. It's just delicious and very elegant looking too. The overall effect is sophisticated as opposed to being decadent, if that makes any sense, um, while also being quite decadent. I mean, like this is a very rich drink. Rich is a good word for this because the cream and the, the flavor profile. That's damn fine. That's <laughs> damn fine coffee. <laughs> a damn fine cup of coffee. Now that I've got the OG version out of the way and corrected my past mistakes, mea culpa, let's talk about the Mr. Black Cold Brew Irish coffee. Mr. Joe Sheridan's gonna get me in trouble if I let him. Only an ounce and a third though. A wee dram. In a mixing glass, or optionally you could build this over ice, uh, whichever way you like. Uh, go one part Irish coffee, and so for that I will pour one and a half ounces of powers. One and a half ounces of powers. And two parts of Mr. Black. So in this case, it'd be three ounces of Mr. Black. Three. And stir that up with some ice. Crack some ice in there. Stir that up. Don't mind telling you it smells delicious. Find yourself a glass, like a rocks glass like this. Leave it big or crack it, whatever you like to do. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna leave it big. Pour in your drink. Now you don't need to do this, but I happen to really like this drink with a orange expressed over it. So I'll pull a peel of my orange and give it a twist. But I'm gonna hold off on putting that into the drink because a little uh, half and half. Now, can you shake it like you did with the other one? For sure. Will I? All right, why not? There's really no reason you shouldn't. It's just a matter of preference. Do you want it to float? Do you want it to uh, mingle into the drink? In this case, I think it'll look cool if it floats. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm just gonna pour that right over the top, boom. So you don't even need a spoon, like I was saying. Then take that orange peel, perch it right on the side there. And there you have an Instagram ready <laughs> cold brew Irish coffee. Now I love the taste of the orange oil and coffee together. I think they're a real flavor profile to sort of made in heaven. So, but you don't want to um, express the oil over the cream because I think it'll like, it'll, it mars it up. It leaves like little spots on it. Maybe you like the way that looks. I'd prefer to put it onto the drink, float the cream, put the orange twist on top for that beautiful color, that contrast. But I love the flavor of coffee with some orange oil. I don't think orange juice would be good with the coffee, but the orange oil, Mm, very good. Let's see how it is. God, I love that. Ooh, that's good. Personally, I think I like that even better than the, the hot one, the, the Buena Vista. Let me go back and forth. It's very different. It's very different. The flavor profile is really different. One, Tullamore, 
Powers. Powers is a little bit more spicy, I think what people would say about that, I think so. But the coffee is fundamentally different. This has a much roastier vibe than that. Now, I suppose it could be, I mean, I'm not using the same coffee that Mr. Black uses when I brew my coffee, right? I don't, I don't actually even know off the top of my head which coffee I use, I think it's Dominican. This has such a undercurrent of bitter roasted coffee um, with a texture that is creamy and sweet. You know, we added no sugar to this either. And I think it's perfectly balanced. Um, it didn't need a sugar cube or simple syrup or whatever. I mean, there's a little bit of sugar in Mr. Black, so there's plenty there. And I love what the orange peel does. So with the orange, the aroma, just having it sit there right under your nose, really, it, it does affect the flavor of the drink for sure. And it, in a way that is nice. Um, how to exactly put into words that combination might be beyond me at the moment. I'm not always a poet, uh, but it is, it's a, it's a, you gotta take my word for it. It's a really good, well, maybe you don't, maybe you should make it yourself, but <laughs> it's a really good uh, combo. It's delicious, it's so good, yeah. Deli beautiful. And it looks really cool, honestly. I think that the, the white and the dark, because they're cold, they don't mingle the same way, right? They kind of remain separated better as you drink it. Some of the, in the hot here, of course, some of the cream is precipitating into the drink. This should remain a boundary layer and you get a, a real, you know, one, two thing. I mean, if you were blindfolded, would that matter? No, but it does make it look really cool, <laughs> I think. Love it, fantastic. Okay, oh God, so good. So Irish coffee got me thinking, well, what about Scotch coffee? So I went to grab a bottle of Scotch to try this with, and I wanted to have something that would have a little bit of peat, a little bit of smoke, you know, to really set the Scotch coffee version apart. So I grabbed Great King Street Glasgow Blend, which is really perfect for this. I started playing with ratios, and I was kind of surprised by how well the smoky scotch and the Mr. Black paired together. I, it did not take me much tinkering at all to find a version of this that I loved. So you can do this in a mixing glass or you can build it in a glass. I'm gonna build it in a glass and um, Mr. Black was really cool. I think they're selling these on their website now. I hope I'm not misspeaking. Uh, these are like enamelware mugs that say cold brew, Mr. Black on one side, death before decaf. I think that they're just awesome. I like, I'm a sucker for enamelware. <laughs> I don't know. So what the heck, let's put it in that. This won't be, um, we won't set this up as pretty as that one anyway. So if there's a place to use it, let's do it. This would be very utilitarian in a mug. Ah, that's, it'll look good. Uh, and it'll taste great too. Uh, I'm gonna throw in some ice, one big cube. I'm gonna pour in a, a, a half an ounce of simple syrup. This one does get a little bit of simple. Um, why? You know, I don't know. It just kind of helped it. Uh, partially because I think for me, for my palate, maybe yours would be different. The smoke is really helped along by the inclusion of a little bit of sweetness. Otherwise it can become <gasps> overpowering. This softens it and makes it interesting as opposed to domineering. I should probably make eye contact with the audience occasionally. All right. <laughs> um, one ounce of the one ounce of the Glasgow blend scotch and two ounces of Mr. Black. And a couple dashes of Angostura's Cocoa Bitters. I have a dash dart on here. Um, I would say two dashes, but I know that this kind of restricts it so it's a little light, so I might even go four. Mm, three, in my case. Stir that up. Ah, that's a hitch. The enamel wear, the ice kind of freezes to it. So at this point, I think it's done. I think it's dealer's choice as to whether or not you want a little half and half or cream in there. Um, I like it black but maybe we'll do it both ways. So we'll taste it black and then we'll taste it uh, with a little heavy cream, okay? So here we are, my scotch coffee. Woo, I love that. Oh man, it is smoky. That sweet smoke is delicious. It's kind of like, I mean, it's not like barbecue because barbecue doesn't have the peat notes or the iodine, but in a lot of ways it's like barbecue because it's like sweet and smoky. That's why that works, right? <laughs> uh, that salty, sweet, smoky flavor. I love it. Oh man, and you still get such a strong roast flavor profile. I would say too that like this is um, a one, a two to one ratio. And you know, in the light of day, 
I've been working on this at night and stuff like that. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe it would go a little bit stronger in favor of the coffee. Maybe the coffee's getting a little bit lost in there. But if you like anything that's a little bit smoky, I think you're gonna love this. I can still taste the coffee. I just think that maybe it could be a more strong flavor in the face of an ounce of the uh, the, the the Great Street. But we'll try that. The cocoa bitters, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just reinforcing all the other stuff that's present there. You know that, oof, a little extra base note, because chocolate, that base is a, chocolate is a very basey kind of flavor. It comes in real low, and it is very deep in the drink and delicious. And it also does bring in some bitterness, but the bitter notes, the sharper notes, the phenylated notes, phenylated, phenols, those from the, it, it, the top end of the chocolate, what you would say, the bitter dark chocolate of the cocoa bitters, does kind of get lost in the smoke um, and also in the roasting notes of the coffee. So the chocolate here is just kind of reinforcing the bottom of the flavor spectrum, which makes sense in my brain. I hope it makes sense in your brain. Did you know that there's a flavor spectrum? <laughs> Just like the electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, it's it's a flavor spectrum. I invented that. I should I should make that a poster. That sounds great. The flavor spectrum. No, yeah, man. Oh, it's such a joy. <laughs> such a joy. It's sharply smoky, bitter, salt, sweet coffee, chocolate, delicious. It's super good. Let's throw in a splash of heavy cream here. And it just floats right across the top without even shaking it. I think it's better with the cream. Just because it, it, it gives everything space, it thins out the flavor profile so that it doesn't punch you right in the face so hard off that first sip. And instead you get time to appreciate, it lengthens the evolution of the cocktail. You get time to appreciate each note in it. Um, you get the smoky and the salt, which evolves into coffee, and then eventually it rounds out to chocolate. And it does kind of make the whole thing just a bit more, I mean, texturally, it's certainly silkier, um, and it makes the whole thing a little bit more decadent. Uh, so in retrospect, I think that the cream is probably a must. It really does add something to this. Should you mix it in? I think it's gonna be six of one, half a dozen of the other. Especially in a mug like this, you know, there's no, there's no benefit in this drink presented this way in preserving a layered nature of it, right? Oh, that's good. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I'm not like big on smoky stuff, but that is hitting, that is ticking all the boxes. That is a hell of a cocktail. Mm. Put the underlight on it. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know. I, I know I didn't, I'm sure that's not the only Scotch coffee cocktail that's out there. I, I didn't really do a bunch of reading on this and to look for others. Um, but I stand by this this recipe. I think this is a <laughs> fucking great scotch coffee, if that's interesting to you. There's a lot of people out there too that love that smoky flavor, that love that Isle thing. Is it Isle or Isla? I think in the US it's okay to say Isle, but in fact it is Isla. There's a whole school of thought on that, by the way. Do you pronounce a thing by slipping into the accent of that region, or do you pronounce it as you would pronounce it in your area? There's two schools of thoughts on that, and people think that you're wrong. I don't think there's a right answer. I think it's a, a lot of times I, I, I joke on in the comments, like, no, that's how you pronounce it in New Jersey, my friend, and it is. So anyway, uh, yeah, but a lot of people love that Isla Scotch, and I think that they're gonna love this. This is super good. And the flavor just stays with you too. As I'm talking and breathing over them in my mouth, I keep getting these roasted coffee notes, these chocolate hint of smoke. The smoke does fade. That's right up front and then it goes away on the envelope and everything else kind of comes in on the back end and hangs out and lingers. And the creaminess of it now with the, with the, half, the, the, the cream thrown in is really enjoyable. It's tough call, but I think this might be my favorite of the three, um, which is interesting because, like I said, I'm not really big on the smoky stuff, but when it's good, man, is it good. Well, what did we do? We made, and this will show the empty glasses, the original Irish coffee from the Buena Vista. We made cold brew Irish coffee, as outlined by Mr. Black, and my own uh, contribution, Scotch coffee in a very utilitarian uh, <laughs> tin cup there. 
Um, death before decaf. Do you have a preferred ratio or recipe for an Irish coffee or a coffee cocktail in general? Throw it up in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Or hit me up on Instagram at how to drink. I can guarantee this one's gonna be a post because it's a beautiful looking drink. Uh, how to drink with a number two in the middle. Uh, you'll find me on Twitter at how to drink. If you uh, want to see more of the show, you want to see the parts that don't make the cut, check out my Patreon at Patreon slash how to drink, uh, where you'll see the parts that didn't make the cut and you can hang out with me in my Discord, uh, where I am sometimes. <laughs> I can't promise to always be in there. I'm kind of busy, uh, but I'm in there as often as I can be. Great community. Great community in that Discord. And I'm also on, I'm on Twitch at uh, Greg from HTD. So, okay, those are the places you can find me that are not YouTube. Uh, also, speaking of which, how about H2D2, the second how to drink? Did you know that exists? It exists. Thank you guys so much for watching this week, and uh, check out Mr. Black. Pick them up wherever very good liquors are sold. Uh, maybe you can buy them online. Uh, that's a possibility for some people in some place cases. If you go to the website, link below, and I think that they can help you buy it online, so hopefully that'll work out for you. At the very least, you can probably use it to find out where it's at in your area. I will see you soon with another episode of How to Drink. And in the meantime, why don't you check out one of oh, these other episodes. There are so many episodes of How to Drink because I've been making this show for five years. I have flushed five years of my life down the tubes making this show for you and for me. And so, you know, it would be great if you would just check out some more of it and validate my existence. Just valid, just... Just see me, senpai. Sen see me, please. Some of you think I'm senpai. You know, you are senpai. I don't know what that means. I have no idea. Is that a sex thing? I hope not.